Five Live Formula One. It was a wet and wild qualifying session here at the Spa Francorchamps circuit, setting the grid for the Belgian Grand Prix. And hmm, surprise, surprise, Max Verstappen was fastest of anyone. But remember, he takes a penalty come race day, 10 place grid drop for the Dutch driver. So he'll start from P11, which means Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari inherited pole position. And he'll line up alongside Sergio Perez on the front row. The Mexican driver doing his best to be there with his teammates but not quite able to do the business and take the pole position that was going because Max Verstappen had vacated the spot. I'm Rosanna Tennant and joining me to talk about that qualifying session is our lead commentator, Harry Benjamin, and former F1 mechanic at McLaren, Mark Priestley. Harry, I don't know about you, but I did not see Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari as the man to take the pole position away from Max Verstappen today. I I thought it was going to be a McLaren. I don't know about you. Uh, no, I agree. Uh, but uh, look, we were going off limited running, really, weren't we? The only dry running we had was was yesterday, uh, and we always knew mixed conditions would come for today, and we barely got anything in FP3. But from what we did see, it felt like the Ferraris were off their game, and they kind of have been for the last couple of rounds because they've, uh, well, since they introduced this big upgrade, oh, I suppose it was back to Imola, really, uh, they've started to, to suffer with high speed bouncing problems, and they introduced something last time out in Hungary to try and limit that and again here uh, still trialing that this weekend in Belgium but if anything if you're going to experience high speed bouncing it's going to be particularly noticeable here at Spa for that long camel straight and it's a high speed lots of medium speed corners as well so I think we're all kind of expecting Ferrari to, to struggle because to try and cure that uh, high speed bouncing they essentially have to make the car a little bit slower to, to stop it so the fact that he was able in these mixed conditions to, to pull that final flyer literally was in his last lap in Q3 both him and Sainz on the track at the same time Sainz could only manage eighth on the road Leclerc blistering lap getting him up to second and he gets pole you have to take your hat off that was a brilliant lap from Leclerc I'm going to throw a bit of shade on it, though, because it was <laughs> over half a second slower than Max Verstappen, who I'd like to keep talking about because he was on fire today in those wet conditions, Mark. And at the end of FP2, Verstappen said that the race was their focus because, of course, he knows he's got that 10 place grid penalty. This is ominous, isn't it? Is he going to just come charging through the field during the race, starting from P11? Well, his his pace was ominous today. It was, yeah, it was around six tenths, I think, wasn't it, over Charles Leclerc in second place, which is a huge amount of time in Formula One standards. And actually, if you go back to yesterday and the dry running that we did get in the practice sessions, he was also very, very quick through that time as well. So looking ahead to the race, he's in a very good position. He's very confident in himself. He's got the car exactly how he likes it. And we haven't been able to say that every race in the build-up to, uh, to the Belgian Grand Prix. But it seems like he's on form. The car's on form. It's a track where this car, the Red Bull car, will be suited to it in terms of its characteristics. And it's a place where you can overtake. A lot of high speed, long straights. So will Max Verstappen work his way through? He will definitely make his way through the, the field and move forward. That's assuming he can get through turns one and two, because when you start from P11, which is where we'll actually start the race tomorrow, you are right in the thick of it. You're right in amongst a lot of other people, the midfield of the pack, and it can get treacherous in the opening couple of corners. So he's got to get through that. Once he does that, and if he does that, he will have the pace to move forward. Can he get right back to the front? I think it's a tall order. He's done it before, but of course, over the last couple of years, he's had a car that's been so much more dominant than everybody else. Whereas now we've got the likes of McLaren, we've got the likes of Mercedes and even perhaps Ferrari who are much, much closer. Yeah, but Verstappen was looking quick in the dry from Friday onwards. He's had a gap pretty much all weekend long. Yes, it hasn't always been as big as six tenths, but I just have this feeling that it feels like we are back last year, year before, and Verstappen will have a bit of an easy ride through it. Uh, it, it on paper this is a track that, that you go oh yeah this is a red bull kind of track uh, long straight drs efficiency to the max of red bull we know they get huge amount of power out of that so i just get the sense that that verstappen will will do rather well tomorrow and how quickly things change rosanna we come into this weekend and it's all to play for seven different race winners from the first 13 races and then boom verstappen six tenths clear look i'm not saying it's game over but i'm I'm just I, I just got a bit of a a bit of a feeling that it's it's gonna be a bit easy for Verstappen tomorrow. 
Oh, but well, I'd like to be proven we'll wrong. <laughs> yeah, well, who knows? There might be a fair few drivers trying to prove you wrong tomorrow afternoon. Let's have a listen in to what Max Verstappen said at the end of the qualifying session, qualifying on pole position, but of course starting the race from P11 with that 10 place grid drop. So Max, another fantastic lap for P1 there. Becomes P11, of course, with your grid penalty. But can you just talk us through that session, how you navigated those tricky conditions? Yeah, the session was good. I mean, we didn't really change anything on the car. Just following the conditions, I think that was more important. So it was a very positive day for us. Of course, I know it's not how it is going to be tomorrow. So, uh, yeah, we optimise everything from, from our side for tomorrow. I hope the, the, the tyres are going to hold up. Um, and then uh, hopefully at least we can fight with, with uh, Ferrari and Mercedes. McLaren, I don't know, they might be a little bit out of reach, but we'll find out tomorrow. Yeah, you touched on it there. I mean, what can we expect from you tomorrow? And you've done it before from P14 in, on the grid in 2022. So can you do it again? I mean, uh, we live in a bit of a different world now. You know, there are a lot more competitive cars up at the front. Um, so I don't think it's that straightforward for me. But, uh, yeah, hopefully we can just have a strong race um, and have a bit of fun out there. Sure. Good luck tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks, Max. So that's what Max Verstappen thinks. Guys, oh, how do you rate his chances then? He's going for a different strategy with two mediums and a hard instead of the two hards and a medium that the other teams are opting for, given as we, as we think it will be a dry race, that's kind of what they want to have in their locker. Do you think they've done the right thing for, for Verstappen to help him with his race pace tomorrow? Well, he, the, the mediums, as opposed to the hards, will give him more pace. He'll have to overtake cars, but he's going to have to do that from starting in, in P11. So you can understand, of course, this decision to take the extra power unit component and therefore take the penalty, that's a decision that was taken long before coming into the weekend. And your tyre strategy and everything is based around that. So knowing that he was going to start back in the middle of the pack, they would have focused their tyre strategy on giving him a tyre that's much more raceable um, and fighting his way through the pack. So what can he do tomorrow? I think he's got every chance to fight his way through. I mean, Harry, you said he thinks it's going to be easy for him tomorrow. I'm not sure it's going to be easy because the very first thing he's got to do is stay out of the way of people like Esteban Ocon around him at turn Careful. one. That's not going to be easy, is it? I mean, uh, Fernando Alonso, he's got to get part. There's a number of cars he's got to fight his way through just to give himself the position. He's got the pace to do it. It, but it's very congested and I think his biggest concern will be the McLarens because although they didn't have the strongest qualifying today if you look at their recent race pace on Sundays is when that McLaren really comes alive even when they have a good qualifying they tend to look after tyres better they tend to be you know a few more options in terms of strategy because they can look after their tyres better they do have a different type of tyre available to them in that hard which means they can run a very different strategy so I think that's going to be his primary concern. Even though they're starting further back, I think the McLarens might be the ones that he'll be most worried about. I, I agree. I think based off of the very limited data we got from Friday and, and seeing some, some other people crunch the numbers on race pace, Red Bull have it for, for Verstappen, but it's not by much. It's it's less than a tenth, half a tenth of a second. But McLaren are, are so strong with their high-speed corners. And actually, in Friday, they were actually better by a, a small margin on the straights compared to Red Bull. And of course, that's one of the main overtaking points on this yeah. track, getting the DRS up through Eau Rouge Radion down that Kemmel straight and also into La Source down the inside or set it up through La Source and up through Radion and then do it on the Kemmel straight. So I, I do agree with you. I think the Stappen will, I think he'll pick off Alonso and Ocon if he yeah. keeps it clean fairly quickly because actually the Aston Martin race pace is, is not good. Um, but then I think if the McLarens haven't made gains at the start and they're kind of still where they are, which will be uh, in the top six, I think that will then could be quite a good fight, especially if the McLaren want to play a bit of team game. Yeah, he's he, changed his tune, hasn't he, Mark? No, I'm not backtracking. I'm not backtracking. I'm not backtracking. Oh, yeah. oh, sorry, I'm I not, thought you were. I'm not. I, I, I <laughs> just, I, I just have a. I'm just a guy that sees it from both sides. Maybe we'll just know? play that clip in a moment ago when you said, "I think he'll have it easy." <laughs> I think. Oh, no, I'll commit. He'll have it easy. He'll breeze past Norris and Piastri, uh, and then, uh, and then Leclerc. He'll get him on lap twelve. <laughs> I thought you were going to give us your like total prediction for the race, lap by lap, like what's going to happen. <laughs> I was like, wow, this is going to be an exciting part. But do join us for the race tomorrow. Um, so it was Charles Leclerc and the Ferrari who inherited the pole position. I think he was surprised, very surprised, in fact, uh, because I don't think he was that enamoured with his own lap. I think he'd sort of done a nice clean one, but wasn't expecting to see his name in lights right at the top of the timesheet. So surprised sort of as much as I was, I think, Charles Leclerc. 
Yes. Well, I, th I think for, for the reasons I kind of suggested earlier, they, they haven't been having a, a, a great run of form. Uh, Charles Leclerc, well, he had a bit of a miserable uh, Silverstone, didn't he? And, and Hungary wasn't great for them either. They were, uh, I think they qualified six and fourth and then finished six and fourth in the race. And, and actually Leclerc had failed to score points at the two previous rounds. So Ferrari were having a, a bit of a downturn. They dropped behind McLaren, the constructors. It's the off-track development of Ferrari that's actually holding them back at the moment. They're, they've lost um, their, their chief technical uh, officer, Enrico Cardiel, in the last uh, few weeks weeks as well so there's a reshuffle going on in the technical department so it's actually a real indicator that Ferrari need to have a bit of a good result I think to boost them going into the summer break and I think that's a, a pleasant surprise for Leclerc uh, to get yes it's inherited but and yes it was six tenths off Verstappen but he still beat the other Red Bull. Mark were they lucky do you think that perhaps the rain helped them in that in that sense? Um, the rain definitely helped them, but it, it only helps you if you have a driver that's able to take advantage of it. And I think when you get conditions like this, it often gives the driver an opportunity to make more of a difference than perhaps on a, on a sort of standard dry track where you're limited by your car's performance much more. In the rain, it's about how much risk is the driver willing to take. And when you take that risk, does it return grip when you push the car to the limit? Do you still get the grip or do you step over the line and, and get a massive snap of oversteer that costs you lap time? Leclerc was able to take those risks today and he found the right level of grip. He didn't overstep them. And, and that's when a driver can make a difference. So Leclerc can feel very content and happy with himself in what he's delivered today. And I think Ferrari should be very grateful for what he was able to do in a car that probably wasn't really justifiable to be in that position. Yeah, I think Ferrari thought P5 would have been a good result today. Let's listen to what the Monegasque driver Charles Leclerc had to say after that session. Surprising himself with P2 on the road, but he's surprised himself even more because he's inherited pole position from Max Verstappen. Here he is. So Charles, I know Max had a bit of a gap over the rest of the field today, but you pulled out a lap uh, at the end there in Q3, a brilliant lap for P2, becomes P1 for tomorrow. How happy are you feeling about that one? Yeah, I'm very happy. I think we have maximize absolutely the potential of the car uh, yes max is quite a bit ahead but to be honest it's been the case since uh, five six races now that uh, red bull seems to have done a step forward mclaren did a big step forward and we kind of stayed where we were and that's the gap that we are seeing since quite a few races um, and also red bull had a bit more downforce which i think helps in those conditions and max is really good in those conditions as well so uh, the full package made it uh, that there was quite a big difference between him and, and uh, us today but i feel like we've done a great job anyway we we've maximized uh, the package that we had and uh, now we've got to look uh, forward to tomorrow it's always a very difficult track to uh, keep uh, the first place uh, until turn four but uh, i'll try my best you touched right there how much of a battle are you, are you expecting on that first lap the first few corners and, and what's realistic tomorrow for yourself and Ferrari? Uh, it's going to be a, a tricky one for sure. Uh, it's all about a good start and a good first corner. And uh, I'll, uh, I'll do my best to try and keep Checo behind. But uh, on a track like this, it's not only the second place that can end up P1 in P4, but also the third and sometimes also P4. So uh, uh, yeah, I've got to do a really good start, a very good uh, first corner, and then we'll see. And is it just a case of when, not if, Max will become a factor tomorrow? I think McLaren is in another planet this weekend. Uh, considering what they've shown yesterday, if they keep the same pace as what they've shown yesterday, I feel like they are, yeah, they are, they, they are incredibly quick this weekend. Max will, of course, be a factor at one point in the race because he will have a lot of pace. But uh, I think it's going to be very difficult to challenge the McLaren for everybody. Then probably Max and, 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 and Checo and then there will be us and, and Mercedes fighting with more or less the same pace. But we've got track uh, position on, on everyone and we'll try to keep them behind. Good luck, Charles. Thanks. I think it will be a tricky day for Charles Leclerc tomorrow in that Ferrari with race pace in the dry. And I think they just need to almost make make uh, hey while the sun shines. That's I can't my even line. think about that. <laughs> no, but I can't even think about that with the rain teeming down here in the paddock. Um, but he's just got to keep it clean off the start and just try to hold on to the lead or at least uh, a podium position for as long as possible. Because do you think they're deserving of a podium at the moment, Ferrari? Well, if you get on the podium, I think you're deserving of the podium. Hey, um, I, 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 <laughs> look, I think they are maybe the fourth 
best team on dry race pace at the moment. I think if it's if it's a normal race tomorrow, um, then I think it, the battle for best of the rest. I think Leclerc will uh, struggle with the slipstream effect from everybody behind him. I would not be surprised if Perez ends up leading the race come the end of lap one because the slipstream effect is so massive. Uh, if if Leclerc gets away well and leads in the run up to uh, Eau Rouge and Radion, so I think that will go against Leclerc. And then I I, I I think he will drop back. I don't think they have the race pace to keep up with them, to keep the McLarens behind. And then I think it will be a nip and tuck fight with uh, Ferrari and Mercedes as sort of best of the rest. And, and perhaps one of them might get lucky and end up on the podium. I think I, I tend to agree. It's one of the hardest places, which sounds like a weird thing to say, but one of the hardest places to start in pole position on the opening lap of a Grand Prix when you know that there are cars which are faster than you that haven't qualified as well as you because as Harry says that very long drag down the Kemmel straight is just pr even before we get into lap two and DRS is a real opportunity for particularly Perez but also the likes of Hamilton who sits right behind him on the grid to find their way through he will do well to hang on to it, which is a strange thing to say when you've got a, a car sitting on pole position ahead of a race start, and we're talking about will he be able to hang on for a podium? You talk about the opportunity for Sergio Perez in the race. Surely qualifying was a huge and even bigger opportunity for Sergio Perez, and, and he, he missed it. He let it slip through his fingers. He finished P3 on the road today. Yeah, he'll start P2 because Verstappen's been taken out of the picture, but surely that was a missed opportunity for the Mexican driver who needs to prove himself. Um, I think, I think this, it's, a, it's difficult to say it was a missed opportunity when he's put himself on effectively on the front row. It's the best start he's had for a long, long time. And going into a Grand Prix, we've just been talking about the sort of the negative side, the, the sort of weaknesses of Ferrari and Charles Leclerc in race, on race day. Sergio Perez is in a car that should come alive on race day. And so he's in a very, very good position. But there's always going to be this little asterisk next to his qualifying position where you, you just remind yourself that his own teammate was more than six tenths up the road in terms of qualifying. And in a car that is probably the quickest, in, in fact, is definitely the quickest car in those conditions, he should have been right behind his teammate. And that's the, the, the argument that Red Bull will always have, that a lot of fans will often have. He's not quite there where he should always be. On the days when Max Verstappen has an issue, when he falls away, when he takes a penalty, they need their second driver, whoever that is, to be the guy that's going to pick up the pieces and take the race win. Now, he could well take this race win. He's in the, a very, very good position. We've had oh. seven, seven race winners, haven't we, so far this season. There's only one guy out of the top eight drivers from the top four teams that hasn't won a race yet, and it's Sergio Perez. Tomorrow will be his best opportunity. The McLarens, who you'd say would be favourites in terms of race pace and current form and all the rest of it, are a few places back. Sergio Perez has got a, a real proper opportunity on his hands tomorrow. I think the It'd only way... It'd be too way, perfect. I think the only way It'd to... It'd be too perfect. Yeah, that. I just think the only way to save Perez now is he needs to win tomorrow convincingly. That's they the made it way. tricky for themselves. They made it tricky for themselves in qualifying, I think, with no new tyres for Q3. They were out of sync in Q2. So it yeah, was they just that, a bit pressurised, wasn't it? They did that because... They, I mean, Verstappen didn't have the same problems. No. They did it because Sergio was struggling in the first parts of qualifying and needed to take extra tyres just to get through. Verstappen managed to deliver laps early on, sit back and relax, watch the rest of the session play out, not needing to take the extra tyres, so he saved them for Q3. So... I get that Sergio Perez talks about not having enough new tyres, but it comes down to not having the pace to be able to sail through the first parts of qualifying in the fastest car without needing new tyres. Well, let's listen to what Sergio Perez had to say at the end of that qualifying session on a weekend where the media spotlight has been firmly fixed on him. Everybody scrutinising his, his every move and wondering whether he will even be in the Red Bull seat come the second half of the season. Here is Checo Perez. So Sergio, great lap for P3 there, becomes P2 on the grid for tomorrow. You're back at the front. How much of a confidence boost is that session for you? Yeah, it was a good one, you know, but um, I'm conscious that tomorrow is what really matters. We've done a lot of changes with the car, mainly thinking forwards for tomorrow. So we will see what we are able to do, come, uh, come away with. And uh, that, that, that's the main target for us, really, to look after the tyres better than we did on Friday. Hopefully get a little bit more pace and, um, yeah get back to a very strong um, race pace. Yeah, you touched on it there, obviously looking to bounce back from a run of 
more challenging races, fight for that first win of the season. Do you feel like you're in a really good spot to do that tomorrow? Yes, I think so. I think tomorrow we should be able to be strong. Um, let's see. Hopefully I'm able to get Charles early on. I'm, I'm able to manage my race. But um, yeah, the McLaren looked very strong obviously on Friday, but tomorrow it's a total different scenario. So um, we'll see. And what do you expect from your, from your teammate Max starting in P11, of course, after that penalty? I, I think uh, he knows, you know, it's important just to stay out of trouble in those positions, which is normally really hard. Uh, I, th I expect him to come through and uh, yeah, hopefully we can have a, a very strong weekend for the team. You know that uh, it's a shame that he has a penalty because uh, yeah, we, we need the momentum with us. Uh, it seems to be now with McLaren, so hopefully we can turn it around tomorrow. Thanks, Sergio. Good luck. Mike Seymour asking the questions there to Sergio Perez. A little bit of a question for you guys now. I mean, we saw some team orders and some choreography playing out in Hungary when it came to the McLaren drivers. If Max Verstappen has managed to clear most of the grid and finds himself in P2 tomorrow afternoon behind Sergio Perez, are Red Bull going to get on the telephone and ask Sergio Perez to move aside and let Max Verstappen take the win to protect his lead in the drivers' championships? There won't be a need for a team radio call because Verstappen will just overtake him on track. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. <laughs> I agree. I think the pace difference between them is so vast, I can't see that being a major issue. And that's the big oh. difference, isn't it, between McLaren and Red Bull? Because McLaren don't have this massive pace differential between their two drivers. They're quite similarly paced. Red Bull do. So whilst it presents challenges in different ways, I think tomorrow if we do find ourselves in that situation, it won't be the same challenge that McLaren faced. Oh, I thought we could have a nice old debate about that. But, but no, <laughs> Sorry. you just squashed it. <laughs> squashed it. Look, maybe, oh maybe, I mean, we could see some more team radio... Uh, management play out with the McLarens. I know we're not quite there yet, sorry, but you know they are uh, stuck together on on the grid, and, and that could prove fruity once again. Who knows? Ooh, can I you. can I just say about Sergio Perez and and you just said there, Harry, this could be a real opportunity, maybe his last opportunity to really show what he can do, and it is a great opportunity given where he starts the race, as we said. This is leading into a summer break where Red Bull have absolutely said they will be needing to take some decisions and have some conversations about their driver lineup moving forward and they're talking about the second half of this very season do they keep Sergio Perez in the car do they replace him with another driver and try somebody else my own feeling and I said this in commentary and I stand by it my own feeling is I don't believe that there's anything Sergio can do tomorrow in the Grand Prix in my mind at least that should change the decision that Red Bull make and the reason I say that is that even if he happens to score a good result tomorrow, maybe even takes the race win, he's done it because his teammate wasn't there in the fight. And that's fair enough. That's all you can do in that situation. But he hasn't done that consistently enough. They know what they get with Sergio Perez moving forward. And for me, it's a no-brainer that you just try somebody else. They've got this unique opportunity with three other drivers on the roster, plus um, Liam Lawson, who's sitting on the sidelines at the moment, desperate to get in a car. They've got a unique opportunity to try one of those guys, either Daniel Ricciardo or Sonoda, in the Red Bull alongside Verstappen, and then bring in Liam Lawson into the RB team and see them play out over the second half of a race season. That's an unprecedented position to be in, where you can try a driver in a competitive environment, figure out how he deals with pressure, how he works with media, works with the engineers and teammates. And if you don't do that, if you don't make a decision to make a change, then you keep Sergio Perez, and we kind of know how that plays out. And at, you know, quite frankly, taking away today's qualifying result, it's not good enough. Mark Priestley, you are now no longer on Sergio Perez's Christmas card list. Do well, not know, expect that Sounds in like the post. Sounds like a team principal. I, I hear there's know. a couple of jobs going for that as well. <laughs> <laughs> but it's true, isn't it? It is true because this is a results industry. You know, yeah. Red Bull are now under pressure. Whether anyone likes to discuss it or not, they're under pressure in at least the Constructors' Championship this year with McLaren closing them down rapidly. And no matter what happens this year, next year, we expect it to be even tighter with McLaren and maybe Mercedes and Ferrari starting a lot closer to Red Bull. Red Bull have had this massive dominant start of the year, which has given them the luxury of a massive points advantage. They won't have that next year necessarily. And so if they don't have a number two driver or a second driver alongside Verstappen, who's able to take a good tally of points from a season and, by the way, take points away from the main rivals, then they're going to find it very difficult to win either championship next year. Well... 
According to Mark Priestley, it is too late for Paris. He can't even <laughs> save himself tomorrow in the Belgian Grand Prix. Uh, if you are listening, Checo, please don't turn off. Do listen to the end of the podcast. Um, behind Checo Perez on the grid tomorrow will be Lewis Hamilton, qualified fourth on the road, but promoted up to P3. Um, and in the lead up to qualifying, I think we were saying he could be one of the drivers to watch in the wet because he's so supreme in those tricky conditions. Uh, do you think that's a satisfying result for Lewis Hamilton and Mercedes today? We know that they've been struggling with that upgrade that they've actually taken off the car uh, and it's been a tricky weekend for them thus far yeah i think so and uh, look yeah we uh, hamilton always does well in these conditions i think to, to start third is brilliant out qualifies russell uh, in consecutive races for the first time this season we know that being out qualified by russell does get on Hamilton's nerves, even if he doesn't always outwardly project that. Losing in the qualifying head-to-head -head at the moment, uh, now after this weekend, 10-4 in favour of George Russell, that will bring a little smile to Lewis Hamilton's uh, face as well. So I, I think I think he got the best out of it, to be honest. Yeah, no, I agree. I think he's on a, a good run of form, you know, from Silverstone onwards, where he had that amazing result. I think. Um, you know, we've seen a slightly rejuvenated Hamilton. Um, and so, yeah, look, I think he, the cooler conditions today definitely help the Mercedes. It tends to come alive when the conditions are cooler. And also, as Harry said, his experience definitely plays out in the wet. In the dry tomorrow, it'll be a different story. Um, but I don't think it's going to be blistering hot, as far as I know. It's just going to be dry. Uh, and therefore, we could see a Mercedes that actually, you know, reasonable performance around a circuit like this. He likes it too. So there's no reason to say that he can't be in and around those podium positions, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. It's probably going to be mild, not too hot here in the Ardennes Forest. And don't forget, Lewis Hamilton is now P6 in the driver's standings. He's ahead of Sergio Perez, who's slipped back to P7. So let's hear it from Lewis Hamilton, hopefully buoyed by that qualifying performance this afternoon. So Lewis, very challenging session out there with the conditions. P4 at the end of it, becomes P3 tomorrow with Max's penalty. How do you feel about, about that result and performance today? Uh, sorry, P3 tomorrow. Oh, yeah, I hadn't thought about this penalty. Um, yeah, uh, generally a good a good, good session, I think. We tried to predict the weather as best we could and, and be out on track at the perfect times, but ultimately you'll look at it and you'll say there's certain areas that we... Certain, like, for example, the last run we were, we were the first out, we um, were out too early. And and then also we didn't have a new set of... Uh, another set, which the others did. But otherwise, I think... I'm pretty sure there are three guys ahead of me all on new tyres, so otherwise I'm you know, really happy with it. I think we've worked as hard as we could and it's the best we could get. You touched on it there, a weekend of changing weather conditions, of course, looks set to be dry tomorrow. What kind of race car do you feel that you've got underneath you and how much of a factor do you think Max will be from P11 on the grid? I mean, yeah, Max will, Max will make his way through pretty quick. I think their car is the fastest here this weekend. Um, or at least tie with McLaren, and um, I think for so yeah, for us we're just going to keep our head out, head down and try and hold position. I'm going to try and see if I can keep up with uh, the guys that are ahead of me, and but I'll give it everything. I'm hoping the changes we made will be better for tomorrow. Thanks, Lewis. Good luck. So a fairly happy Lewis Hamilton, I'd say, but I love the fact that he hasn't really kept abreast of all the headlines coming out of the paddock <laughs> this weekend. Oh yeah, I hadn't thought about Max Verstappen's penalty. Uh, so promoted to P3 for Lewis Hamilton. Behind him, the two McLarens. Lando Norris had a really difficult start in Hungary. He blamed that as uh, part of the reason why he wasn't, a, a sort of would have been a worthy winner of the Hungarian Grand Prix. Mark, is that something he'll have been working on in this uh, well, few days, I guess, that we've had since Hungary to make sure he's sharp off the line was that just a, a sort of blip, do you think? Well, I actually think if you really analyse his start from Hungary, it, it wasn't necessarily a, a Lando failure, if you want to call it that, because I think his reaction was good, his, his initial launch was good. I think he got a little bit of wheel spin in the second phase of the launch. And actually, it's, it's almost been... So that's an engineering problem that can be fixed and, and it's just a case of looking at data you know when you when you start to build the start model into your your launch program you can start to you can look at that, that data and you can literally tweak parameters and, and improve it so that's what they'll be doing all the way through this but actually the start has been an issue even only in tiny elements on a few races for Lando and McLaren 
and it will start to just get in your mind. You're always going to be thinking when you're sat on the start line. It's just a thought that creeps in where you'll start to think about things that you might not really be wanting to think about because it distracts from actually what you should be doing and the focus on the, the initial reaction. So it will be a factor, I'm sure, but hopefully not a big one. And actually, the start's not necessarily the biggest thing around the start, the first few laps of the race here because you've got such a long straight shortly after the start you can actually afford to not get the optimum start. Of course, you want the best one, but even if you don't, you can recover a little bit further around the lap. Well, what does Lando Norris have to say about his qualifying session and how is he feeling ahead of the Belgian Grand Prix? Let's find out. So Lando, strong start to the weekend in the dry yesterday. Obviously a very tricky session for everyone to contend with today. How do you reflect on that session and the end result? Um, it's tough, yeah, tough, but um, I'm honestly pretty happy with today. Um, I think in, in the end, because me and Oscar were split by half a tenth or something, clearly we were, we were lacking comparing to the, the cars ahead, um, uh, especially the Red Bull. The Red Bull <laughs> Red Bull's another level comparing to us uh, in the rain and, and even the dry, they were probably still a bit stronger. So um, a tough day, I expected worse and I've not been driving particularly well. Uh, just one of those days where it's just not, not clicking. Um, Kind of similar to yesterday, honestly. So, just a little bit of a struggle out there for me. Um, so to to salvage a P5, I was pretty happy with. And you'll be moving up to P4, of course, with Max's penalty. So, you feel like you're in a really good spot to fight for that win tomorrow. I mean, we're in a good spot, but um, we have a Red Bull on pole still, <laughs> um, and they're uh, they're, st they're clearly the quickest, you know. So uh, it'll be tough. Max is going to come through, uh, I think, pretty pretty quickly still, and. Um, yeah, most likely going to be fighting him for the win, but I'm hoping with maybe a slightly lower downforce setting that we chose today, uh, it kind of come back, it come, comes back into to our favour score. Thanks, Lando. Good luck. So it's funny, isn't it? We slightly slipped back into the 2023 vernacular, talking about Max Verstappen coming, zooming through the field. The driver seems sort of resigned to the fact that Max Verstappen is going to be finding his way to uh, podium positions, maybe even the race win. But... I'm hoping that some of them will make it a little bit challenging for him, aren't you? Because I feel last year it was a little bit like, oh, yeah, Max, you go through after you, sir. Look, I think it, it could be uh, an easy case of coming through, and I am going to back myself on that. It's my initial thought. Oh, he's gone uh, full circle. Especially as Lewis Hamilton was also saying the same thing. So uh, <laughs> me and LH are always on the same wavelength with these kind Another of Another night of the realm exactly, you are, aren't you? Exactly. <laughs> you know, a night in waiting. And um, <laughs> I think that that will happen. But look, this is an epic circuit that we've got. It's one of the all-time classics. We always see some fairly decent racing, overtaking opportunities galore. We've got a little bit of a jumbled up grid but look we've got a closer grid than we've had over the last couple of years despite Verstappen having that dominance so I think it is geared up to still be an exciting race worth tuning in for. <laughs> so I'll just run you through the order then. Um, uh, after Lando Norris, it was Oscar Piastri, his teammate, McLaren teammate, George Russell, P7, Carlos Sainz, P8, some way behind his teammate, Charles Leclerc, Fernando Alonso, P9, and Esteban Ocon, P10. Then uh, a notable performance from Alex Albon, P11. He was so close to making it into Q3, wasn't he? A very, very good session for him. Three thousandths is what he missed out on uh, this afternoon. Do you think he can hang on to, to maybe even a points paying position tomorrow, guys? I think for Albon, it will be a, a tough ask to hold on to points. I think Daniel Ricciardo in the RB further back is looking really fast and, and actually is probably a little bit out of position. Uh, and even Pierre Gasly was looking quick, although that was better in the mixed conditions. I think it'll be a tough ask for, Ocon, uh, for uh, Albon to hold on to that final point. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Although you do often see this being a bit of a race of attrition. Not not so much anymore as you used to in the olden days, but the turn one is a very, very tight corner at the start of a Grand Prix when you've got all 20 cars filing into a very, very slow, very tight corner. And then, of course, you come all the way down that very quick hill into that sort of pinch point at the bottom before going back up the other side. So there's a number of areas, particularly on the opening lap, where you can quite frequently see issues happening cars being spun around and knocked out of this race so if you can fight your way through the first few corners until the, the field starts to spread your way out if you're Alex Albon that's exactly what you need to do there might be opportunities there for him 
Yeah, P11 for the Williams driver, Pierre Gasly P12 in front of Daniel Ricciardo, who I think got the timing a bit wrong in qualifying. P14 for Valtteri Bottas, a great session for him in the Sauber. And Lance Stroll managing to make it to qualify. I say that because he had a crash in FP3 and he's taken on a new power unit as a precaution, new gearbox. Uh, front uh, parts of the car have been replaced as well. So it was a race against time to get him to qualifying. So I'm sure he's pleased that he managed to get through to the second part of the qualifying session. And then Nico Hulkenberg, P16, ahead of his teammate, at Haas, Kevin Magnussen, Yuki Tsunoda finished P18, but of course is taking a, a lot of penalties for new engine components, so he'll start at the back of the field. Logan Sargent, P19, in what could have been, could have been his last qualifying session in F1. His career uh, is still pending. Uh, and then Joe Guan Yu, and he was under investigation for impeding Max Verstappen. How are we looking on that? Have the stewards made a decision on that? Not, not, that that really seen, not that we've seen no. come through, no. But, of course, you can keep up to date with the BBC Sport website and app for all of that information ahead of the race, Rosanna. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. I shall be glued to that overnight. <laughs> um, <laughs> guys, uh, what do you reckon, then? I I'd love your podium predictions. We don't normally do it. We haven't really been doing it much, but, but why not? Who do you think is going to be on that top step tomorrow afternoon? I think if it isn't Sergio Perez, something's gone horribly wrong for him because he's in the best position. But... I would say as an outside bet, I still think Lando Norris has a shot at winning the Grand Prix tomorrow. Um, I am going to back Max Verstappen for the win. He's gone for it. What wow. about you, Rosanna? <laughs> um, well, look, I'm going to put some faith in Charles Leclerc. He thinks it's going to be tricky in the dry conditions, but he is starting on pole. He took his first ever win here, didn't he, back in 2019. So maybe, maybe it could happen again for him. I think it's going to be a tricky one, but... You know, I'm putting some faith in our pole sitter for the Belgian Grand Prix. Guys, thanks very much for reviewing the qualifying session with me. It is You're still so raining, still raining in the paddock. I think the rain is going to move on overnight and we will have dry conditions for the Belgian Grand Prix. Do join us on Five Live at two o'clock. That's when the race gets underway. We'll also be live on the BBC Sport website. And of course, you can listen on your smart speaker of choice too. We're hoping it might be quite an exciting or at least interesting Belgian Grand Prix. Thank you, Mark. Thank you, Harry. A pleasure to chat to you as always. And we'll talk again tomorrow. This has been an IMG production for BBC Radio 5 Live.